Welcome to the Radish EMR Philippine General Hospital Department's Orientation. I'm Homer from Department of Medicine and I'll guide you through the Radish system. Let's get started. Getting a Radish Account To get your personal Radish account, you need to submit a letter of request for a new user account through your department chair and address to the director. Please include your up.edu email address in the letter. Once the request has been approved, the Medical Record Division officer will communicate with you and register your user information and have you sign the non-disclosure undertaking form. Your user account credentials will be emailed to you. Radish URL The Radish system has two URL or web addresses, one for the PGH network and one for the UP Manila network. The PGH URL is 172.30.1.18 slash radish. It can be accessed when your device is connected to the PGH network. The UP Manila or VPN URL is 172.16.187.118 slash radish. It can be accessed when your device is connected to the PGH or UP Manila network locally or via the UP Manila VPN remotely. For instructions on how to get a UP Manila ADS account and set up the UP Manila VPN on your device, please contact the UP Manila IMS or PGH IT office. The Radish Login Page Radish has been reported to work well with a range of web browsers like Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Opera, and Edge. Radish is being developed using the Google Chrome browser environment. For best results, use Google Chrome browser to access the Radish website. If you encounter any issues with Radish using any of these browsers, you may leave a message in the Radish Messenger or contact me. Type the Radish URL in your web browser address bar and press Enter. The Radish bulletin board modal will be shown over the login page. Take time to read the Radish bulletin board for new announcements. Click anywhere outside the bulletin board to get to the login page. Type in your Radish credentials, your full username and password, and click the login button. If it is your first time to log into Radish or you have not changed your password, please do so before doing anything else. Click on the hamburger icon on the upper right corner of the page, then click Change Password. Type in your current password on the first box, then type your new password on the second and third boxes. Your password must be at least 8 characters in length. Click on the Change button to save your new password. The Radish Dashboard and Navigation Bar The Radish Dashboard homepage shows the different emergency and inpatient areas of the hospital. These areas are currently grouped as follows. Emergency consults, emergency room admissions, maternity and room in, medical wards, intensive care, COVID-19 wards and ICUs, bayanihan na isolation unit, surgical wards, and pay floors. The header indicates your current user access level and your username. When using a common area workstation, always make sure to check first that you are the current user logged in before making any entries in the EMR. Click on the hamburger icon to expand the menu of functions to update your user-specific information like password, e-signature specimen, your PRC license and S2 license numbers, contact info and email. You can also find the links to the Friday and Quips dashboard and user guides here. The Friday and Quips dashboard displays a hospital census, information, COVID-19 data, quality metrics, and many more. Click on the hamburger icon again to hide the menu. Uploading your e-signature and PRC S2 information. Click on the hamburger icon and update e-signature link. If you have previously uploaded an e-signature specimen, it will be shown here. Sign on the space provided above the line, 
it is highly recommended that you use a tablet with or without a stylus for achieving the best results. You may use a mouse or trackpad on a desktop or laptop computer, but it may be more difficult. Click on the clear button to start from scratch and redo your e-signature. Click on the save signature button to upload your e-signature specimen. To update your PRC and S2 information, click on the hamburger icon and update PRC license link. A modal window will appear for you to update the following information. PRC license number. This is the minimum required as this information is required for clinical documents and EMR entries for PhilHealth claims. S2 license number and other information. This will be useful if you are e-prescribing S2 medications using the Radish OPD EMR. Click on the Submit button to save changes. Radish Messenger If you encounter any issues or need assistance, double-click on the Radish Messenger found on the right lower corner of the screen. A dialog box for submitting your queries will be displayed. For longer queries, you may opt to use the messenger board link found within the menu of the hamburger icon. Navigating to the patient record. There are two ways to navigate to your patient's record. The first is through location, and the second is by patient search. Let us try and search for the record of the following fictional patient. With case number of 4070092, McGin Lee Robert Lee, 50-year-old male, admitted at Ward 4. On the Radish homepage dashboard, look for the area where the patient is located and click on the link. On the search box provided, type the patient case number or name to filter the list of patients. After confirming the patient identifiers, click on the patient chart button to view the inpatient EMR. This is the method by location. You can also click on the search patient link on the navigation bar. On the search box provided, type in the case number or the patient name in the format of last name, comma, first name, and middle name. After confirming the patient identifiers, click on the active admission button. This button will be available only for patients who are currently admitted. This is the method by patient search. After you click the button for the link to the patient record for both methods, if it is your first time to access the inpatient EMR, you will be prompted for a passcode. Type in the correct passcode to access the EMR. The EMR page contains the following. Patient information and identifiers, links to the lab results and procedures list, OPD appointments and admissions history, links to search OPD record and create or update admission clinical forms, the problem list, view and upload images, link to view the vital signs and other observations, the therapeutic and parenteral sheets, and other admission-related information, EMR entries, and new EMR entry form. Reviewing admission-related information, diagnostic examination results, vital signs, therapeutic and parenteral fluid sheets, and updated hospital bill. Click on the Lab Results List button to view the list of released diagnostic examination test results. Click on the View button to open a new tab containing the diagnostic test result form. To view the recorded observations for this patient, click on the VS and Observations button. The observations are grouped under Vital Signs, CBG, INO, GCS, and others. Click on the buttons for therapeutic and parenteral sheets to view the respective information.
we recommend doctors to become familiar with hospital service costs for more cost-effective management decisions. You can view the updated breakdown of hospital service charges by clicking on the View Hospital Bill button. The list is grouped according to cost center or service item category. Problem list and other background information. If the patient has a problem list and other background information saved previously in Radish, this information will be shown in this page. You can add or update this information by clicking on the Add or Update button and typing in or editing the information for the following. Problem list, past medical history, family medical history, personal social history, ob history if applicable, and allergies. Reviewing chart entries. Scroll down the middle of the page to view the EMR entries. By default, the latest entry of the current date will be shown. Click on the pagination tabs to flip through the pages backward and forward. To view chart entries of a specific date, click on the calendar widget and select the date and click the Get Chart Entries button. You can also click on the left or right arrow buttons to go backward or forward by day respectively. To view a list of all EMR entries for this admission, click on the Select Chart Entry from List button. Type in the search box to filter by service or by author. Click on the Select button to view the contents of the specific chart entry. Creating a new chart entry. After reviewing the chart entries, scroll down further to the new chart order entry form. Specify the following information which are necessary. Your service, notes, and orders. If you want to add some formatting to your chart entry, click on the Enable Text Editor button to use common features like bold and or italicized text, bullets, and colored or highlighted text. You can use one of the available blank templates for your chart entry. Click on the drop-down widget provided, type to search for the template, and click the Add Template button. To post a request for diagnostic examinations, click on the Order Diagnostic Exams button to reveal the Add Item button. Click on this button to add a request. Click on the X button to remove the row as needed. Specify the diagnostic center and the test to be performed. It is best to select from the auto-suggested items to ensure the correct name for the test is specified. For ABG and imaging requests, the indication for the test should also be specified. For CT scan and MRI requests, Click on the CT MRI button to add a template for necessary information like EGFR and requesting physician. For MRI request, click on the MRI declaration button to show the MRI declaration form. Tick on the answers to the screening form and submit. Click on the Submit button to save your EMR entry. In case you made an error in your entry, you can strike out this entry only within the day of submission. To do this, click on the Strike Out button and the chart entry will be shown with strike through text. Reviewing Student Progress Notes If this admission has been assigned to a student trainee who is required to make progress notes, 
you can view the submitted progress notes by clicking on the Select Student Entry From List button. The number on the button shows the number of progress note submission that are yet to be reviewed by you or other teachers on board. Hover over the number and the list of specific entries with their date and authors will be shown. Click on the Select button of the progress note you will review. The progress note will be displayed in the space provided for EMR chart entries. After reviewing the progress note, you can leave feedback by clicking on the Add Teacher Feedback button. Select your star rating, then type in your comments and feedback. Click on the Save Feedback button. A progress note may have more than one feedback from the medical, nursing, and paramedical staff. Reviewing OPD Charts you can also review the patient's OPD chart. Click on the Search Patient's OPD Record button. A new tab will open with a list of patients with the case number provided. After verifying the correct patient row, click on the Select button. Click the Patient's OPD Record button and read the alert and click OK. Scroll down to review the patient's charts. Note that having previously encoded the correct admission passcode, will automatically allow you to access all the OPD EMR chart entries. Otherwise, the OPD EMR requires you to have the correct OPD EMR passcode entered. Note, however, that you are able to view OPD chart entries that are your own without the need for passcode. Updating and signing off clinical forms. Clinical forms include the clinical abstract and the discharge summary the PhilHealth CF4, and other forms like ob forms and OR techniques. Your e-signature will only be applied to documents you have approved through a sign-off. Click on the ED Admissions List button to view these forms. Note that a draft sign is present on documents that have not yet been signed off by any one of the assigned attending physicians. No e-signature is also applied. Before signing off the clinical forms, make sure to review them first. Click on the Update Clinical Form button and review the contents, and update as necessary. Once you are satisfied with the contents, submit the CF4 first. Refer to the Radish User Guides on how to submit CF4. Once successfully submitted, sign off the document by clicking on the Approve and Sign button. Note that if at least one of the assigned doctors has signed off the clinical forms, it will no longer be editable. Sign off must be undone for both assigned doctors to make the documents editable again. Note that the signed off clinical forms will now have your e-signature applied and the draft sign removed. Other features and links. There are many more features in Radish that you may discover on your own as you use the system. You can upload images, make sketches, and even embed them in your chart entries. There are also other available links in Radish, like the UP Manila subscriptions to UpToDate and Science Direct when you are connected to the UP Manila network locally or via VPN. The Full Codes website to search for PhilHealth ICD and RVS codes with corresponding case rates and the QuickSafe, which is a repository of infographics on topics regarding quality and patient safety. You are also encouraged to report any patient safety event in the hospital through the online form found in this link. We have reached the end of this orientation and tutorial. Thank you for your kind attention.